Today in New York City, we are relishing the street food scene. From delectable dosa to hot mess tacos, oh boy, we are in for a treat. We also try assorted skewers in Chinatown and drop our jaws at the majestic public library. Ready or not, let's munch! Greetings from New York City. It is almost 11 a.m. and we're going to be spending all day today checking out the street food scene here. Yay! Our first stop is the Halal Guys. At this very intersection is where their first cart has been open since 1990. I give you one falafel free for you. Thank you so much! Does the Plara the Halal Guys? The regular size Thank is the so best much. in the world. Do you like white sauce? Yes, please. What is in the white sauce? This is this is the mayonnaise. This is the best in the world. Wow! Do you like spicy? <laughs> a little the bit. The hot sauce is very very hot. Okay, just a little bit. A little bit hot sauce, brother. That's enough. That white sauce is like a swimming pool right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Is> enough? <laughs> yeah. I think it's more than enough. Oh no yes. Problem. It come with lettuce, rice in the bottom, chicken, gyro, and pita bread. If you like onions, green pepper. Jalapeno I have on the side. No How do problem. you say thank you in your language? In in my language Arabic thank you say shukran. Shukran. Yeah, and thank you so much shukran jazilan. Shukran jazilan. Shukran jazilan. Make a shukran picture jazilan. me and your mom. Bahim. Bahim. Halal. Halal. Guys. Guys. I love halal guys. I do it. <laughs> I love how it just really drizzled on that sauce. It's a little bit of a bibimbap situation <laughs> yeah. where you mix it, but he was saying you could just mix a little bit of a little bit and eat it instead of the whole thing. Chicken. Mm -hmm. Ooh. First, I tasted the chicken, and then the creaminess, and then the hot sauce kicked in. It's our first time having halal guys, and now I'm wondering why didn't we eat it sooner? Yeah. Oh, look at that color. Wow. Such a bright orange. Oh, this time it's beef? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty juicy. When I first saw the meat, it looked a little dry, but it's not dry. It's a little bit chewy, it's smooth at the same time. Crispy. Is it crispy? Yeah. I didn't have On a crispy the edge part. It's a little crunchy part. Maybe the bites you had were a little crispy. Oh, falafel. Bite. Mm. Ooh, that's tasty. Some falafel I've had is very salty, but this is like not salty. Or maybe because the sauce is more flavorful, so you can't really feel the salt in that one. That's the falafel inside. Hey, it looks green. This portion has plenty enough for two of us, just one plate. Even one more person could help us eat this. It's quite a bit of food. Only for $9, all this. Let us try the pizza bread. <laughs> kind of like a pizza. Absolutely, I will come back to New York for this. Look at your glasses. Mm-hmm. Halal guy's platter. It's a very chilly day. My hands are like freezing, but the plate is warm. So you just warm your hands with one hand, and with the other hand, warm your innards up. And right over there, there is the MoMA, Modern Museum of Art. We went there yesterday. Round one complete! That was pretty filling. The cart in the distance, that's the Halal Guys we ate at. Here is a second one, and then a third one. All together, they have three stalls at this intersection. Before we go to the next stall, we're gonna stop by St. Patrick's Cathedral. Up ahead is a familiar face, the Sabret hot dog stall. There are three vendors selling Sabret hot dogs at this one intersection. Maybe even more. I think we're gonna have to try it. Forget the hot dog, we get distracted by the smoky skewers. The chicken kebab on pita is said to be one of the most popular items at this stall. Barbecue sauce! And the hot sauce, yum yum yum! Yeah! <laughs> oh. Mayonnaise! Right? Mayonnaise! Uh, Mayonnaise! Yeah. Yeah. Mayonnaise. Yeah. Woo! Look at spicy that! Spicy or spicy? Just a little! Hot, 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 hot. Little hot. Little hot. bit! Lira, yum yum yum! <laughs> <laughs> Instead of pita, the whole skewer goes on a hot dog bun. Then he drizzles on more mayo sauce. <laughs> He's going to with that yum. sauce. That is gonna be eight dollars. Yum yum yum. <laughs> There's some 
communication stuff going on. I was trying to say like, okay, uh, which one is most delicious? And he didn't understand still, so then I was like, I pointed at the picture. Yum, yum, oh or is it? Yum, <laughs> yum. <laughs> And then I pointed at the chili dog photo and I asked him, is this yum or yum? I don't know if you understood me, but now every time we talk to him, he's like, yum yum, yum yum. Needless to say, this skewer is steamy and saucy. A bib is more than welcome to join the party. Or your jacket can become a napkin. Now that's what I call functional fashion. This rarely happens, but my camera didn't record me eating the skewer. I think the price point wise, the uh, halal guys, you get more for your money. I like this kebab dog uh, because it is delicious. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> New York City is dense with diversity. It's beautiful how people from different cultures, religions, and lifestyles can harmoniously coexist. We all have a unique set of experiences and perspective, but respect and love is what binds us together. More subbread stalls! Ooh, they're all hidden away. Onion, sauerkraut, ketchup, mustard. Ooh, too much! Whoa! Let's <laughs> get some relish on that. I'm noticing a pattern. New York vendors tend to be generous with their toppings. Is it really the best New York hot dog they say it is? Only one way to find out. It's chomp time. It squishes so easily. It's a bit of a race because if you hold it for too long, all the toppings, it feels like it's gonna rip open at the bottom of the bun. So this one's four dollars. I feel like the halal guys, you get a really good deal though. For nine bucks, all that food oh, yeah, yeah. and the diversity of ingredients. Mm -hmm. Subred is famous, subred is everywhere, but I do feel like uh, it's overpriced for what it is. If I'm completely honest, tastes more sad than happy. But that's just me. Maybe you might like it more. They also sell pretzels. Maybe give those a shot. About a five minute walk away, we're back on 6th Street for biryani. Called a biryani cart, the vendor sells chicken tikka, chapli kebab, as well as hot dog and falafel. Vegetarian options included. I was wondering, what is your best dish, in your opinion? Chicken biryani? Pati roll? Okay. Yeah, everything. Everything? <laughs> this stall is called the biryani cart, so we should probably get the chicken biryani. And the gentleman said it's gonna take 15 minutes to prepare the chicken biryani. So Mamio's gonna get some coffee. 15 minutes later, we pick up the goods. You don't want street food that's been sitting around. This one is super fresh. It's really cold outside, so we decided to come inside a cafe to eat. And Mommy also got some cannoli. That's our dessert. She also got some coffee. The basmati rice and chicken are a neutral yellow brown, while the dash of hot sauce acts like a highlighter. Wow, flavor is so delicate. Each grain of rice is infused with savory spiciness. I think it's some kind of curry spice. He was asking us if we want white sauce, red sauce, and then like a green spicy sauce. And the white sauce is also made of mayonnaise, just like the one at Halal Guys. This rice is so good. You don't need to eat the rice with anything. Just as is, it's so good. There's also some uh, raisins, yellow raisin. We got a hard boiled egg, and you know these little darker brown pieces? That's more cooked and crunchy rice. Or there's a little piece Pepper of corn. peppercorn. Mm -hmm. Although the biryani cart and the halal guys, it's both rice and meat, they have their differences. Here, the rice is the star of the show. At halal guys, the meat were the star of the show. They were like, mm. Time for dessert. This is the second cannoli we had this trip. I was expecting a soft cream, but it is a hard cream. The one we had at Grand Central Station, I think that was more tasty. And this one has a little bit soggier exterior. We come across another stall that sells biryani and halal street food. Here's some more halal food carts. We've had a good dose of savory dishes. Let's satisfy our sweet tooth. Hey, waffles and dinges! It's actually dingus. And dingus is the Belgian slang for whatchamacallit or yummy toppings. Build your own waffle or choose a legendary recipe. We get the chocolines, the chocolate dipped Belgian waffle crowned with marshmallows covered in more chocolate. And here we have the waffle with speckle spread and a generous amount of powdered sugar. Ah, reminds me of a fresh layer of snow on a perfect day in winter wonderland. Snapping out of the daydream, Belgian hot cocoa to warm up our booties. 
안 나와. <laughs> 얘가 얼어가지고. <laughs> Because the chocolate is frozen right now, and the whipped cream is not moving. Chocolate sprinkles on the chocolate. Very nice. Let's try the waffle and dingus. Oh, look at the waterfall of sauce. Wow, that is sweetness. The speckled spread is um, almost thick and creamy like a peanut butter, but more liquidy than that. You know with peanut butter, there's like that friction and you really need to have some uh, drink with it to make things unsticky. This one, there's a little bit of that moment. I think we need like a herbal tea. <laughs> this is like sweet, sweet, everything so sweet. I need espresso. It's good though. Mm. It's a tasty sweet. It's really good. The chocolinis, you're up next. This one, the chocolate, is <laughs> pretty stiff as well. <laughs> the base has no chocolate. <laughs> that chocolate has really hardened. Some parts of the marshmallow, it looks very toasted. You got those little burnt areas. When it comes to texture and flavor, I prefer the waffle with the speckled loose spread. Because that's liquidy, I like everything. I like chococo and this one, my heaven. <laughs> urban space. It's a holiday market, only open in the winter. After the season's over, they get rid of the whole structure. Next to Bryant Park is the Stephen A. Schwartzman Building, which is part of the New York Public Library. This Beaux-Arts landmark is packed with aesthetic detail. The decorative golden brown ceiling frames a painted sky. Jaw-dropping visuals, I tell you. Feels like stepping into another world, somewhere akin to Harry Potter's universe. No need for other words, let the architecture speak for itself. As we continue to digest, let's stop by Macy's at Herald Square, which was the world's largest department store until 2009. Holy wow, wooden escalators! They kind of sound like a rickety roller coaster. Built in 1902, these escalators are over 115 years old. On the seventh floor, there's a McDonald's, and it made the clothes near it <laughs> smell like fries. <laughs> And then on the sixth floor, there was a Godiva cafe with a, a ice cream. Hot cocoa. Oh, and hot cocoa. Just got back to the hotel. We're gonna rest a little bit for about an hour. My feet are steamy in the boots, and the bottom point of my foot is kind of pounding. So, yes, yeah, time to rest. Now we're heading to a stall that sells assorted skewers. Now some sources say it is located in Lower Manhattan. Another source says it's in Flushing. Not sure if this is one card or two cards with multiple locations, but we're just gonna have to see for ourselves. We invested some time and energy to get here. Fingers crossed that this card is open and is in fact located in this neighborhood. Hey, the stall is open! Uncertainty transforms into anticipation. The handwritten menu also lists the items in Chinese. Open daily, except for rainy days. I am so stoked this is open. So stoked. I think the lamb stick is going to be good. What else should we get? What is the sweet potato? Is it kungoguma? I think so. Yeah, Ooh, sweet potato. You want that? Yeah, we need to yeah, get one. Let's get some sweet potato. Yeah, baked sweet potato, huh? Yeah. We have a rice cake, sausage, lamb, and fish tofu. And we got a bag of sweet potato. Lighting is a little tricky. And because the weather is cold, and we've got to have this while it's warm, it's a race against time. And the shadows are just passers by. Let's try the rice cake. It's salty, it's sweet, it's like a, a cousin of tang soup sauce, fish tofu. It tastes like fish and tofu. Then I guess it means it is appropriately named. Mm. No, the texture is more like fish cake. The flavor definitely tastes like a barbecue. Because all the carcinogen on the grill, that's probably <laughs> where that flavor is coming from. The inside is smooth. It's a spicy though. To me, it's not really spicy. She asked if we want it to be spicy, and I said just a little bit. Oh. Yeah, so I think it's the sauce she put on there. Mm. That's the lamb. All right, it's a little bit more work. 
It's like chewy, crunchy. It's tasty. Mm -hmm. Tasty. Mm -hmm. It's flavorful, but you don't absolutely need rice with it. Like some skewers, you have it, it's super saucy. Then you're like, oh, I really need to have something to balance this out. But this one, you could just enjoy the skewer as is. I feel like the uh, rice cake is more flavorful mm -hmm. of the bunch because so far. Because there's some, some sauce on it. Now let's try the sausage. Mm, it's a sweet sausage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sausage we had as a bread was very plain. This one, it's like that dried meat. It's kind of like Bi Cheng Hyang. Which one do you like of all of them? I like fish pepper. Mm. Texture-wise, my favorite is actually the sausage. The sausage, some bits of the exterior is crispy, and then the inside is juicy. Whoa, is there corn in that? I feel like I felt a kernel. After they cook it, they cut off the sharp ends, the pointy ends, and then it becomes straight like this and more friendly to eat. Like everything is good, at least the ones we had. If I lived here, I will come maybe five, six times and then try all of them. I think it closes at 1 a.m. Yeah, they close 1 a.m. every day. Buy 10, get one free stick. Okay, now for dessert, sweet potato. Mm. Wow, it's completely black. black on one side. <laughs> is it black on all sides? Oh, the other half, as a two-face. She was like running away like... Face of approval. <laughs> Love. Oh yeah. Mm. So simple, it's just sweet potato. There's no additional anything on it. No seasonings, no sauce. The sweet potato is talking, and it's talking sweet. A bunch of sweet nothings in your mouth. And it's steaming. Yeah. Mm, look at that. Oh yeah, against something black, you could really see the steam. Oh my. Whoa, what just happened? <laughs> He's taking apart the skull. Oh, it extended out into the street. Oh, I thought it was an actual structure permanent. It's 7.30 p.m. on a Sunday night, and it looks like other businesses are closing as well. It's pretty chilly, so we're just gonna go back to the hotel and come back out tomorrow morning for some more street food filming. Keep in mind that some food carts are closed on Sunday, which is why we shall continue our food adventure tomorrow. Traveling or not, gotta exercise. Another day on the Peloton. This machine is pricey, so I'm taking advantage of it at the hotel gym. Good morning from Washington Square Park, and we're gonna be checking out a very famous dosa stall. It's a little past 11 a.m., and that is when this gentleman opens up. Can you give me? Sir, with the coconut chutney and a small cup of lentil sauce. It's totally meat free, gluten free. That's oh, that is beautiful! <laughs> Keep the change, thank you very thank much. You. So Let me We're get a spoon napkin for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. What is this over here? That's a hand grilled veggie roti, vegan drumsticks and samosa. Vegan drumstick? Yeah, that's a curry potato goes in the masala. Known as the Dosa Man, Kumar has been making South Indian crepes since 2001. We've got a handful of options, all are vegan. I'm told we must try the masala dosa and the special pondicherry. Various drinks to accompany your meal. Where are you visiting from? Far away or you live here? Washington State! Washington State? Seattle, Washington. You're from Washington State? So am I. Oh, you do! <laughs> yes! That looks so <laughs> yummy! Mm. Yeah. Thank you! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You guys stay on. Oh. Alright, we found some checkered. Is this chessboard over here on the table? Oh, an unlucky penny! We got the special ponda cherry. For those new to dosa, this thin folded shell is made of rice and lentil. Here we have sambar. It's lentil soup with some vegetables and chutney, specifically coconut chutney. Also picked up a coconut milk drink. We gotta head to the airport very soon at 1 p.m. So we're gonna finish this and show you one more cart before we leave. How do we do it? Do we just cut it? Oh, so crispy. I shouldn't have cut it. 
smells healthy. Mm, there's potato in that, carrot, cilantro, and red onion. It's a fresh crunchy inside, and then it's a toasty crunchy on the outside. It's a little sour, like a sourdough bread. The queue we saw when we first came, that is actually the queue for people who already ordered, and they're just waiting for their food. There are a lot of Indian people in line. One gentleman, he came here before and ordered this same one, Pondicherry. And there's another woman in line and she says she comes here all the time. There's a little bit of a medicinal flavor to it. I think there is a ginger too. Mmm, ginger. How about the chutney, coconut chutney? Yeah, let's try some of the coconut chutney. The texture looks like a tofu. <laughs> this is salty. So you oh yeah, it's salty. Mm -hmm. Tastes like um, fresh coconut meat, grated. Yeah, the chutney is called the dosa. I know, but I like to eat my sauce individually and see what it's like before I add it into the food. Mm, I like the vendor's attitude. He's calm. When people want pictures with him, but he's cooking all the food himself, but he's still like calm. Instead of feeling rushed and making customers feel rushed, he's really chill. It's good as is without the chutney. Uh -huh. Oh, let's try the lentil soup. Ramyo already tried it. <laughs> Very gentle. Gentle but spicy. Now, you can make it spicier, but we said just a little bit spicy. Ooh, I really tasted the ginger in that bite. Mm -hmm. No bite is the same. Some bites you get a big chunk of potato. Another bite you get big chunks of crunch. I didn't give you a close-up crunch. So with the little bites we have left, let me show you. Do you hear it? I'll bit myself. That was way too easy to eat. You know the dosa was so good. It tasted like it was made with a lot of love. Just love and be kind like him. <laughs> he's so kind. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. About a five minutes walk. We are at Prince Street and Wooster. Gourmet Mexican street food. I love the logo. The man is going backwards. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. What's your specialty? The most popular protein is probably the pork and the steak. This is the tacos, uh, the quesadillas, the burritos, and the burrito bowls. Each taco has a double layer of soft corn tortillas. The top and bottom are heated up. One taco is loaded up with pulled pork and chipotle sauce. The other is filled with carne asada, marinated grilled steak, white sauce. We meet again. Toppings vary on the type of taco you get. The carne asada taco comes with sliced radish, chili cream, crispy tortilla chips, and cilantro. The chipotle pork is served with pickled red onion, pico de gallo, sour cream, and also cilantro. Okay, mommy is gonna squeeze the limes. It is real challenging, Mina. Oh, so much juice. Oh yeah, you gotta be careful. Lots of liquid coming out of that. Drippity drip drip. Wow, the best chicken taco. <laughs> <laughs> the best. <laughs> so sexy. So sexy. <laughs> I've never heard anyone call a taco sexy. <laughs> I'm gonna make a shirt that says, This taco is sexy. I feel like, you know, the sexy hamburger commercial. <laughs> <laughs> sexy Everywhere, red sauce and. Like a. Taco version of Arby's? Yeah. <laughs> is it Arby's? I don't know. I don't know. Arby's is that dripping commercial. <laughs> mm. It's so moist. It's a mess. It's a hot mess. I got some chipotle sauce on my bag. Does that make my bag sexy? <laughs> okay. No more sexy. No, now the napkin is sexy. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Carne asada. Is that sexy too? Or not as sexy? Maybe it's more fun than sexy. It made you dance. Much easier to eat. Yeah, that one is not water falling with liquids. And something crunchy. Mm -hmm. Tortilla chip strips. 
although it's more dry, it's still tasty. But the other one, that one is like, yeah, you're right, sexy. If you don't want to deal with any mess, get the carne asada. But if you just want full on flavor and really want to interact with your food, then get the pork. If you don't catch the cart, no worries. They do have a restaurant, so you don't have to like eat it outside if you're cold. What is your favorite thing you ate in the past 24 hours? Number one, dosa. Halal? Oh, dosa! Number two, biryani. Uh, number three, halal, you know, the pl platter. Everything was good in their own way. The subbread hot dog, no. <laughs> in my opinion, maybe some of you guys like it. My favorites were the dosa and halal guys. Out of all the things we ate, what interests you the most? Let us know in the comments section. Then we head to the airport. Farewell, New York City. Montreal, you're next. By the way, I still got some videos from India and Japan. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles. Boom. Honey roasted nut stall. We're standing a good 10 feet away from it and it smells so sweet. <laughs> Sauce. It's okay if he's Yeah, 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 it's okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he gave us a white sauce. Yeah. Egg yolk, vinegar, salt. With vinegar, black pepper. And this is the hot sauce. Oh, and that's the hot sauce. Yeah, it's very, very spicy. The three partnering founders of Halal Guys, they opened a hot dog stand right at this intersection. 53rd Street and 6th Street. According to their website, they realized there was a huge demand from Muslim cab drivers looking for halal food. And that is when the famous platter of chicken and hero was born. And they expanded their hot dog menu to halal food. By the way, this word is tricky. People tell me it's more like gyro, but in New York, I'm hearing gyro. Which is it? Tomato, tomato? Amount of food will fit best foot player. Whatever size stomach you have. <laughs> Did you say basket foot? <laughs> Did you say basket foot? <laughs> so yeah, is that the short way of saying basketball player and football player? <laughs> basket foot player. <laughs> I think that pigeon wants some halal guys. He knows where the food is. Oh my arm. So at this intersection they have two stalls and other side they have more. So it turns out this is a St. Thomas Church and there is another street food stall. This one sells coffees and sandwiches. Is it okay for my video? Is that a mispronunciation of dog or is it supposed to be a gog? Maybe we'll have the hot dog later. <laughs> but first we gotta go to the cathedral. My hair is all staticky. Okay. My vlog arm is sore right now. Is it too late to change one for your monetary? You can change it. Rice and lentil, big one for you. Big yes. dosa. Yes! <laughs> is it you in the photo here? Yep. This is like 2002. 2002. This is in 2016. 2016. This is 2006. 2006. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Your evolution. <laughs> Sorry about the harsh lighting. Can't help it when it's sunny like this. I don't know if that helps. Fun story how waffles and dinges came to be. The king of Belgians, Albert II, heard about the soggy Belgian waffles in New York. These so-called Belgian waffles are a disgrace, he said. He then commissioned the special forces from the Ministry of Culinary Affairs to upgrade America's Belgian waffle. The king knighted Thomas de Geest for the mission and crowned Rosanna Figuera, thus the birth of waffles and dinges. 